Welcome back to part two of this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of work in the style of Paul Catherall. And just to show you what I've done so far, um, I finished doing all of the buildings along the skyline, um, some of which you saw me do in the first part, um, like the shard and the gherkin and um, the bushes and St Paul's Cathedral and then the various other buildings in front of and by the side of those buildings. And as I said in the first part, it really is up to you how much you simplify it down. And I really couldn't help myself, but I put some cranes in there too. I kept looking at Paul Catherall's work and I saw that he put some really nice red cranes in his, so I did the same. Okay. So now we've got our skyline in, we need to start worrying about our bridge. So we're going to make everything invisible so that I can see what I'm doing. Creating a new layer and then going to the rectangular select and selecting the bridge. Then the polygonal lasso tool, press shift to start off and then going around the rest of the bridge. Okay, and it's the same process with the buildings. Just clicking around all of the points. Until you've got the bridge. And then I've noticed he does his bridges in this rather fetching red. So I'm going to do the same. Fill in my bridge. And then... Um, worry about the uh, support of the bridge so select a new layer draw a rectangle where I think it should be and then fill it with a dark grey okay and while I'm here, I'm also going to um, do the other bits underneath the bridge. So on the same layer, using the polygonal select tool, I'm just going to go round the dark area to the right hand side. And I'm going to amalgamate all of that into one shape. And then same again fill it with that gray okay okay then looking over the other side of the bridge i just want to get that kind of shoreline in but simplify it down so i'm just going to do it as one rectangle and fill it with something that kind of color that i find in it fill it And now to add that kind of white triangle in the middle of the uh, bridge, like Paul Catherall does. Same again, new layer. Creating the shape using the polygonal lasso, filling it with white, paint bucket and fill. Next up, I just want to add some detail into that bottom right hand corner. So I'm just going to select out some of the lighter bits and it's going to add just a little bit more detail to it than being a big dark blob and choose a grey and fill those in. Okay. Right, the last element that I want to do is the two boats at the front here. But I'm going to do them exactly the same way as I've done all the other elements. So I'm not going to bore you with it. I will cut back when they're done. Right, they're all done. And I thought I would show you what everything looks like now. So it's just a case of making everything visible again. So clicking on all my layers. So you can see what it looks like with all the elements
present and correct. Okay, there you go. Okay, so without the background, that's what I've got thus far. Now we need to worry about the background. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is put some um, shadow underneath the bridge. So, new layer, rectangular select tool, choose a nice dark blue, click OK, and then fill that area with that blue. Okay. Uh, next up, new layer. And I'm going to select the bottom half of the image underneath the bridge. So from the bridge and down. And I'm going to get kind of turquoisey blue. No, it needs to be greener than that. Something like that. Yep. Okay. And paste that in. There we go. And then only the sky left. So a new layer. And then from the bridge and up with the rectangular select tool. And I'm going to do my sky a vibrant pink. Kind of like this. Click OK. Paint bucket. And fill. And I think we're done. Oh, no, actually, those ships are too dark. So I'm just going to grab that layer. And maybe use the same grey as in the corner to fill those. That's better. OK. Right, so now this piece is done and dusted. So I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Maximum quality and click OK. And having saved it as a JPEG, I've now cut back to when I've opened it up just as a JPEG in Photopia. So it's now a flat image that I can work with. And you know why, because I wanted to show you how to use image adjustments, hue saturation, and slide the hue bar left and right and you can change the colours to your heart's content. So if you're not happy with the original colours, you can try for a completely different colour. Okay, and that ends this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful.